Forbes Books presents The Great Digital Transformation with Gerard Zatvani, highlighting the pioneers that reimagined possibilities and reimagined businesses. This week, we are talking about AI and how it's transforming the way we search with Laurent Simoneau, the president and CTO of Coveo. Laurent is considered one of the industry's top enterprise search experts, and Coveo is a leader in AI-powered relevance platforms that transform search, recommendations, personalization, and merchandising within digital experiences. We're going to do a deep dive on how search enabled by AI can find the proverbial needle in the haystack. Jerry, how are you? Hey, Joe, great, great. I'm uh, here in the beautiful Quebec City, really preparing for a pre-launch event of the book. Excellent. And so you're always traveling, always getting around. What's going on in Quebec City these days? Oh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, it's a beautiful fall day. Um, and I'm surrounded here with friends. Uh, we're going to have a, a party. And um, it's for me, it's a little bit nostalgic because this is where I started uh, my business. And this is where um, I'm starting the pre-launch uh, tour, uh, the North American book uh, tour. And um, it's, it's kind of um, emotional a little bit for me, uh, surrounded by people that I know. So, um, you know, um, amazing things. Just listen to the podcast, watch the videos to hear a emotional Jerry Sajvani is going to be surprising because you're all about business and getting your thoughts across. But to you to get emotional, this is going to be good. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this, Jerry. Uh, you, you cannot do business if you don't put your heart in it and, and the people around you and everything. That's, it has to be emotional. If it's not emotional, it's not real. Excellent. So our guest this week is Laurent Simoneau, the founder of Coveo. Laurent, welcome to the podcast. Good morning. Thank you. Glad to be here. So I always like to ask these questions of the guests because usually I'm like the third wheel on a date. I come around to make sure everyone's doing okay. So I want to know how did you and Jerry meet, how long you've known each other, and talk about the connection between the two of you. And by the way, I will tell you, I've gotten the answer that this is the first time we're meeting. And <laughs> I've known Jerry for 20 years. So which camp do you fall in under? Yeah, it's the first time we meet in person, but I've known of Jerry. He's a he's sort of a local legend to a certain extent. So I've known of Jerry for, for a long time through, uh, through common friends and, uh, and partners. So finally, I meet the man. Yeah, I've been called many things, but local legend never, you know, this is the first. <laughs> well, who's, who knows, Jerry, now that you're an author and entrepreneur, you're doing pretty good. So, Laurent, yeah. uh, I want to start by talking about your journey to Caveo. We want, we're going to talk about Caveo's story and all that, but how did you get there? What, what were the steps you took, your career, that made you want to found a company? You know, speaking to Jerry in past episodes, it ain't easy in the tech world to found companies. And, well, it's easy to start them. It's hard to keep them alive. So what prepared you to become a founder at Coveo? Yeah, that's one, it was not even easy to start, actually, on my side. So just to make it a little bit more complex. So for those people old enough, they may remember a company by the name of Copernic Technologies that was based in Quebec City. And it was a uh, local, it was a desktop search uh, aimed at consumers. So we would throw searches to Alta Vista, Yahoo. <laughs> You're showing your age now, Laurent. Alta Vista. People are like, what is that? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Ma, ma, I said old, right? <laughs> and uh, when it was time to sell the company, before that, I formed a small group at Copernic that would, uh, that would start a building an enterprise search solution. What we did when it was time to sell the company, the acquirer at the time did not want those 15 people that were relatively expensive at the time working on a technology that had no customers and um, actually no ways of selling ads because that was the business model at the time. So we spun off those 15 people into a new company by the name of Coveo with about three months of cash, we could sell the old company and we said, let's go for it in this new company. The thesis was that at the time, Google proved to the world the search box was really the universal interface for users to access information. And we looked at that and said, there's, 
90% of the information in the world that is not available to Google or accessible through Google. So what are we going to do with that? So we said, let's, let's build a search engine for all of those use cases or all of those organizations that want to search in their own, in their own content or expose some of, their, of that content to their users. And that was the thesis behind Coveo at the start. Now, uh, Laurent, as a layperson, when you tell me Google doesn't have access to 90% of these things, as someone like me, I'm like, oh my God, I thought Google, you could find anything. So what, what were these things that Google was not providing? So internal databases at uh, customers in aerospace and defense, intranets, customer service um, data. So it evolved into customer service websites. It evolved into e-commerce websites, for instance. So organizations want to own that, right? They want to own the experience and they want to power the experience uh, for their own customers or their own employees. They and for that, that's what we do for a living still today. Basically, Google searches everything that is published. Everything that is not published, which is the, the below the water part of the iceberg, this is what Coveo searches. Um, so it's a, and it's a huge amount of data and information. So you can, you can plug into your enterprise and go through all of your systems and bring up the information in a manner that is relevant. To, uh, to your users. And uh, Jerry, I know you've got your paws everywhere in continents all over the planet. Uh, when did Coveo come up on your radar? Well, you know, I, I, I knew the, the people that have been involved with Coveo. Um, it's, it's a small business world in Quebec. Um, and um, I was, I was uh, very fortunate to, to be uh, friends with uh, one, one of the, the um, um, top execs uh, of, of Coveo and um, uh, I, I learned about this, these things and um, the first thing that came to my mind, hey, this is something very interesting. How can we bring it uh, for, you know, for us as, as, as a user, uh, OSF, we are using actually Coveo in, for our uh, databases. How can we use it so that we can connect everything that we have and, and really facilitate the life of our um, of our employees by, by easier access uh, and more relevant access to information. So that, that's how I, I bumped into it. And then one thing led to another. Um, we, we said, well, we did it for us. Maybe we can uh, work with uh, um, other companies to help them do the same thing as we did for us. So that's kind of uh, my journey with, uh, with Coveo. Um, and it's not obvious because it's, you know, you, you believe that all of this information is so easy to access. The fact that you have so many different systems makes it very um, difficult to digest, makes it not so relevant. So having something that connects everything, brings it together and puts it in a manner that is relevant, uh, it's, it's powerful. Uh, Laurent, you know, the tech industry loves their wordy press releases. Uh, so I found a Coveo press release where they explain what your company does. And I'm going to read it. Coveo's AI powers relevant interactions for hundreds of world's most innovative brands and is supported by a large network of global system integrators and implementation partners. What does that all mean? Yeah. <laughs> what it means is that Coveo aims at solving big and complex problems for large companies. It's around e-commerce, making your store performing better, because you want, we understand your intent and we can do A-B testing and optimization almost in real time based on what you really want, while at the same time matching the merchandiser's objectives of pushing certain products versus others. It means doing the same thing for in the context of customer service. Every problem that you can solve on your website means that the agent, the very expensive customer service agent, will not have to spend time on this, right? Uh, it means helping tens of thousands of employees finding the right information in their own network so they can innovate faster, they can solve problems um, in a more efficient manner, and so on. So that's what we do. 
And then all of those large customers, or at least a lot of them, are trusting folks like Jerry and, and others with their data, with their infrastructure, with their systems, with their IT strategy. And the link between Coveo, that is a, uh, is a pure software play, uh, and those customers is often to their strategic integrator and advisors. So maybe it would be interesting to go into a specific case because uh, we are talking in very interesting generic terms, but like going into a very specific case of what like for what impressed you like in a way Coveo has been used and search in as an idea has been used with maybe one of uh, your customers an example that that really intrigued you yeah sure so um and we you know, Laurent we don't want to get you in trouble so you don't have to say the customer name if that's going to be a problem so you could just say describe <laughs> we, we don't want you to get in trouble today so if you want to just describe it as what it does and then we'll go from there of course, of course. So let's talk about a, um, a very large uh, electronics manufacturer company that, um, that sells both to large businesses and to and, and uh, consumers. So these, uh, these folks had trouble or had challenges managing customer service. They had 20,000 agents that would handle tons of cases, right? Customer service cases. Um, and one did not know what the other was doing. The information to solve the case may have been in system A while it was looking in knowledge base B. Um, and maybe the answer was on the website actually. So First of all, we cover all of this information, all of these systems, all of this knowledge base, all of these knowledge bases, and make that searchable in a quarter of a second, okay? Then we add a relevance piece that is driven by AI that will understand instead of doing keyword search, we are going to understand based on your behavior, based on what others have done before, based on your user profile, we're going to understand your intent and give you what you really want and what you really mean. And then with that, we're going to measure the performance that we're bringing in terms of time to resolution for the agents. And then when we move that experience on the website, we are going to measure call deflection also for the end users. So that customer said, okay, that's great. We're saving uh, millions of dollars with that, right? So let's apply the same technology to our e-commerce website that handles billions of dollars of transaction each and every year. So because we understand what people are looking for on the customer service side, we understand their problems, we understand uh, how they name things, right? Depending on the region, it may be different. So we apply that to e-commerce. So when they are looking for when they are looking for certain kind of products, well, we're going to suggest additional products that do make sense for their journey, right? We are going to increase the basket size. We're going to increase the conversion, the conversion. We are going to provide a better experience because it's faster, it's more relevant. And at the same time, and that's, that's not trivial, because we are doing AI, because AI takes over the relevance part, all of their merchandisers that each and every week had a meeting arguing about boost and bury rules about the product they had 1500 plus boost and bury rules it means that this week for this audience we're going to boost this product and we're going to hide this product right merchandising rules well with ai we've cut 1500 to about 30 rules and we've increased conversion by 10 percent and revenue per visit by 14. so all of these merchandisers, now instead of arguing around a spreadsheet each and every week, now they can do more strategic work 
which is uh, which is more relevant for the company, and it's, I guess it's more fun for them too. But I mean, you have situations where uh, you just bought something on a website, and then the same website is suggesting you to buy the same thing again just because you bought yeah. it. How smart is that? You know, like it. Uh, uh, we we need to we need to do things in smarter ways. We need to bring technologies that can provide a better customer experience overall. And I think that with this AI-enabled search technology, you can accomplish that. But even more so, what's important is to shift the the work burden, the workload from menial, repetitive. I would say somewhat mindless types of tasks towards value added tasks because there are so many things like people always complain in their jobs that they can do some they cannot do something meaningful because they have to spend this huge amount of time on, on doing stuff that is not really value added. So that's the the idea is to shift as much as possible the, the time spent by your people towards stuff that is really uh, value added, that is really smart, that is additive to your business, because there is so much more that they could do. They could try new things, they could, because AI will not be solving for everything. will solve for certain types of problems, but then other things, you know, you need to bring the human creativity and you need to bring in the people to address these, these topics. Interesting. And uh, earlier, Jerry, Laurent gave you a lovely compliment, said that you were a legend and they should probably build a statue about you. Uh, so uh, talk to me about Coveo and Laurent. What separates Laurent's team from other folks in that industry? They are visionaries in the space, really. It's uh, the way they approach um, enterprise search and the way they apply AI to it. They are really visionaries. Um, and it's it's not for nothing like uh, this management team that uh, is is working uh, in building up Coveo has been involved in the past with with other enterprises and building them up and and it's a very smart and savvy team um, running it and and uh, Laurent with the brain uh, to put this vision in 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 place it's it's uh, it's a you know they are reimagining and, and, and building the, the future of uh, enterprise search. Um, so that's, that's why uh, I'm also interested in what they are doing and, and watching them and collaborating with them because it's, it's very innovative. Like it's, it's, they are really thinking out, outside the box and, and looking at things in, in ways that, you know, it, it really surprised me how they applied, for example, how they applied search to e-commerce in order to increase relevance and therefore increase the conversion rate on e-commerce, which is the, the holy grail in e-commerce. When you're talking to someone that is doing e-commerce, it's always about conversion, conversion this, conversion that. Um, and and the, the way that they are actually putting it together and, and using search and AI to increase conversion and, and help merchandising to improve their day to day and, and therefore increase conversion by being uh, smarter and, and more productive. This, this was, I, I, I haven't seen this coming. And when I, when I saw it, I was like, ah, this is interesting. This is like new ways of like digital transformation. In my opinion, it's about looking at technologies and what the technology can bring to reimagine your business. Um, there are so many possibilities. You can use technology in so many ways uh, in, in today's world. Uh, it requires you to sometimes step, step back and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rearrange my business because look how many possibilities do I have. Um, and, and bringing these things to your table, uh, I, I think, it's, uh, I think it's, it's very, very interesting. And, and it's very interesting to be surrounded by, by people and, and companies and, and players that can always raise you to the next level, can push you to the next level uh, um, and, and challenge you, really challenge you. Sometimes it's challenging because you haven't thought about it like this. You, you're not used to it. You're, you're used to do things in a certain way in your day to day and then comes come someone and, and completely challenge, you, uh, challenge the way you, you're doing things and, and it, it takes you out of your comfort zone. But that's that's the that's the interesting thing. That's 
that you should embrace it, you should, you should think about it, you should analyze it. That's, that's the part that will push you forward. And Laurent, uh, Gerard, uh, Jerry uh, moved us into this direction, so let's go there. And I've kind of thrown you some softballs along the way, so now it's time for the tough questions. Digital transformation, that's why we're here. That's what we're talking about. When someone asks you what digital transformation means, you heard Jerry's uh, take on it. To you, what does digital transformation mean to you and Coveo? It means using technology and processes, new processes, um, to replace the uh, repetitive, boring, unproductive tasks that have been um, that have been there for 20, 30 years. Um, and, and digital transformation means also creating experiences both for employees and customers of an organization that are personalized, that are one to tailored for you, that are one to one. Uh, it means um, experiences that are relevant, that are linked to your intent, um, that are secure. So it means to care about the privacy and, uh, and security, especially these days, yeah. right? Of course. And it means to create value. Sometimes you will, um, you will, uh, you will do digital transformation to lower your cost, but most of the time it will also increase your revenue as, as an organization, and it will increase uh, your productivity, and it will allow your organization to go into areas that would otherwise be impossible to contemplate. Um, and it will allow you to compete. So for me, digital transformation, it's the umbrella that covers all of these aspects of what's happening right now. It's driven by AI, it's driven by technology, and um, it's quite exciting. There is, a, there is an interesting thing going on, um, I don't know, uh, in the auto industry. So the way the, the German manufacturers build their cars in, is to have all of the options, all the nice to have, it's, it's a lot of, so you end up with the manufacturing line if you want your car super customized and personalized, you will have to wait for it for six months, um, a year. Um, Tesla, Elon Musk said, no, 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 we're gonna build one car, the same car, with all the options and gone, we're gonna enable and disable them based on your preference and we can even uh, do uh, something that is uh, more um, customizable. So that's, um, that's something that, you know, digital transformation can be, uh, can be done. So um, it, it's, really, it's really taking you out of your way of doing things and rethinking, like why, why should we build like 10,000 types of cars? We're gonna build one, one type of car and we're gonna uh, customize it and personalize it uh, with software because the technology is there. The technology allows us to do it, so why not do it? Well, Jerry, there is that old English saying that variety is the spice of life, but I guess you are not, uh, <laughs> you are not in that camp, I guess. But you can get the, to variety in various ways. Like you can have a variety enabled in very different ways. It's, it's like uh, I, I've, uh, I've been uh, walking around in, in München this summer to a BMW museum and they are now showing off a, um, a car that can change its color in any way that you want. So, you know, it's, it's, you choose your color. It's, it's a different way of, of creating variety. That's the same way like Tesla, it's creating variety in different ways. Um, because technology enables you to do it in different ways. So you don't necessarily have to do it in the, I would say more, not more, more traditional way where you would build a car and you would really adjust everything to make it like that, but you can you can approach it in different ways. I don't think my Subaru is going to change any color anytime soon, Jerry. If, I'm going to have to paint it. If uh, I don't think there's going to be a button for my Subaru to do that. You may change your Subaru, though. <laughs> it's probably it, Laurent. Hey, Laurent, you mentioned earlier when we talked about your explanation for uh, digital, digital transformation, you talked about being specific, especially in the B2B sense when you're, when you're speaking to another company, being very specific to their needs. And I know for a, many a company, 
it's for scaling, you have to create a one size fits all model that can be replicated. I mean, that's, you know, everyone's looking for that one thing and then replicate it over and over again. So how does a company like yours scale when every time you work with a different client, it's a different thing? Does that make the, that make your process longer, tougher, or have you gotten it down to the point that you've been doing this for so long that it's easy for you to, to come up with different systems for different companies? Yeah, so that's a great question. And um, the way we look at it is we've got to provide the same thing to all of our customers, the same engine to all of our customers, but with a lot of flexibility in it. So then folks like Jerry and Jerry's team can adapt, can build, can tailor to each large customer's specific needs. And that's the, um, and that's the beauty of it, right? Our job is to provide a very robust platform on top of which others can build for the specificity of each and every customer. I, I would say, think of a car analogy, now that we are talking today about cars. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's, you have one engine and you can have different models, different cars that are using the same engine. Um, and you can even, even uh, connect it with different wheel bases, you can connect it with, with different suspension, you can connect it with um, uh, overall the different makes of a car, but it's the same engine that runs a car. So having a powerful AI engine that brings the data together and that, that's, that's, I guess, that's the the commonality between all of the customers and then what you feed into it because the same engine can go with um, gasoline 100 percent or it can be a bio mix or it can be 100 percent ethanol or whatever the same engine um, so depending on what you put into it uh, you will get out a different uh, result different power so it's it's you know, these kind of customizations that go around it, which you can fine tune it, you can adjust it, you can build it in different ways, but it's the same engine that does the job. I'm not sure if my analogy is. That, that's, that's perfect. So, and just to give you an example, in the next minute, just as we speak, there will be thousands of searches being done on a home improvement website in Australia. Uh, a fashion website, a fashion store in Europe, um, a grocery store. Jerry Spot Yanni's book. North and <laughs> exactly. A, uh, a grocery store in North America, all on the same platform, all in the same cloud in a fraction of a second. So that's our job. But then to adapt it to each of those specific use cases, um, that's, uh, that's Jerry's job basically. And I want to pull a thread a little bit on what you mentioned, Lauren, and, and, and pitch it over to Jerry. Uh, Jerry, Laurent was talking about the word flexibility. How important is that word when it comes to any tech company, no matter what you're doing, the idea of not being stuck in one way, creating this one, one engine, doing it one way, but creating something that can be flexible. Break that down for me, Jerry. Well, in our world, especially when you are in a B2B context, when you're behind the wall, where you have access to a lot of systems, you know, we, we sometimes encounter situations where the customers, our customers have legacy systems. And by legacy system, I mean like Alta Vista type of old systems, <laughs> like 20, 30 years old um, IBM mainframes that you need to connect uh, to <laughs> to an AI search, you know, and, and, that's, and that's, that's really, that's when the flexibility comes in, that's when you need to be able to call up, say, hey, Laurent, look, I have here a situation that I never thought I'm going to find. You need to connect uh, this mainframe to, <laughs> to your system. How do I do that? How can we, how can we actually plug into that and how can we, we gather the data and, and process it in a meaningful way? That's when flexibility comes in. That's when you need to all the time add on top of it and connect it with other new ways, new systems um, in order to make it powerful. High tech plumbing, we call it. High tech plumbing. <laughs> and Laurent, when did you realize the importance of flexibility, especially when it came to building Coveo? So one early board member told me, Laurent, apps 
PAPs are a piece of technologies that are going after one specific problem. Apps take less time to build and they're growing faster. But platforms, meaning something on top of which you can build a lot of apps, um, they are more expensive to build on your side, they take more time, but they're worth a lot more in the end. I said, oh, that's cool. And um, so, so that's why we started thinking about building a platform to start with. Um, so we would have this kind of flexibility and we could adapt over time to multiple problems that could, that could occur. So if you didn't meet that board member, you probably would have developed the next dating app or something like that, right? Just like every tech entrepreneur nowadays, you just want to build an app and, and be done with it? I, maybe, maybe, no, or I, maybe not, maybe not. Laurent likes complicated. Laurent doesn't like simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> challenging cool. problems, challenging, uh, you know, big uh, brain problems, this kind of. <laughs> yeah, and we like to build, we like to build technology to solve our own problems to start with. So dating app, I did not have this need. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? We have to address the invisible 500-pound uh, elephant in the room, and that's AI. It's been uh, discussed much upon in this conversation. And I just it's so funny. I just spoke to someone who works in the DOD's AI department, and we joked about the fact that people outside of the tech industry, the only thing they think about AI is the Terminator movies. They think Skynet. They think, you know, rob robots are going to take over the world. Um and they're like, my God, we are like decades away from anything like that even possibly happening. So when you're having conversations with folks, not industry folks, but people outside the world, when you try to explain to them AI and the importance of it and what it actually is, how, how do you say it to those people? AI is a technology that will use um, um, surrounding data, the uh, past history, the events, uh, the past activity from, uh, from users on a website, for instance, to um, stop guessing, stop being irrelevant, stop being random, and really tailor the experiences and the information based on what people are really expecting. Um, I can give you multiple examples, right? If you just do a search on a grocery store website, you search for fish, uh, if you don't have AI, maybe you will get those fish cookies, right? That will appear on top. Why is that? Because there's a Boost and Berry rule that says that the fish cookies are more profitable. So let's, uh, let's promote that. AI will understand that based on past transactions, based on past experiences, when Laurent or Jerry were looking for fish, chances are we would rather see salmon or cod or things of that nature than cookies, right? Um, and uh, AI also allows you to personalize. So if you're buying tofu and all sorts of vegetarian uh, meals, you may not be a prime candidate to get the big promotion for the rib steak, right? <laughs> So those are the kinds of things that AI is, um, where AI is solving today. And um, it helps tailor better experiences. It helps having customers that are, um, that are more happy. And it helps merchants compete with the likes of Amazon and others that are using these techniques. And um, AI, AI basically is also evolving at, um, at removing repetitive, as I said earlier, repetitive and boring tasks for employees. And that's great for society as far as I'm concerned. There's a way to leverage the real potential in, uh, in human beings by not asking them to do stupid, repetitive, boring things and boring tasks. So AI is also there to help that. You know, we live in a, in a very paradoxic world where a lot of AI is being used more and more, but somehow you cannot find people for, you know, for your, your job positions that are open. We have many, many open positions. You cannot find uh, people. And this is not just in tech. Look around. 
you know the situation in the U.S. The 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 job rate uh, the is 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 just a very tough market. And all this with all this AI technology, with all this technology that supposedly uh, are there to replace people. Because AI is not that, it's not about replacing people, it's about specializing on some task in order to remove this mindless repetitive task from people, to make them more productive, to make them more uh, valuable to the organizations, to augment them. That's that's how AI is being used today and, and this is and even if we're just at the beginning because the possibilities are endless to how can we transform what we what we do by using more and more of this AI but it's not about replacing people as much as it's about augmenting people helping people making them more relevant helping to for them even in terms of getting better at what you are doing learning faster AI should be there to help you move faster, to help you grow faster. Uh, there are there are ways uh, in doing this. So um, it's we are not in that Terminator movie where AIs are going to take over the world. And <laughs> uh, but we are definitely in a world where there could be a great potential of improving our lives significantly by using uh, AI. And Laurent, obviously, the human factor plays a big part. In AI, people just think, oh, it's just the computer doing things. But you need humans to input all this data in there and be involved with it. Talk to me about the connection between humans and AI. Yeah. So so AI in a way, or at least in the world I, I'm, in, I'm in, AI is to understand the uh, human behavior based on past experiences and based on past, uh, um, on past interactions and understand that to, um, to predict the next, the next interaction, or the next, how the next experience should look like. So, if you don't have those previous, those previous interactions with humans, it's really hard to predict the next one. And Jerry, what do you see as the future of AI? You, you say Skynet's not coming anytime soon. Uh, what does, what, what are the next logical moves that AI, AI will, will make? Well, it's definitely going to transform the workforce. Um, at least uh, in my world, uh, in, in services business, um, you know, um, a project that you, um, you use the four consultants to deliver uh, this year, uh, next year you're going to use uh, three consultants and some kind of AI productivity tool. Um, and this will enable you to actually do more projects, better work, grow your team faster. Um, I don't see it as a work, uh, workforce shrinker it's it's a workforce expansion tool and and making you uh, be better at what you're doing in simplest terms jerry it's like you said ai is going to do stuff that humans not only don't you know don't do don't want to do no human is going to want to sit there and input all this data all day long it's a lot of hard work it's about making the making your job more meaningful making your job more relevant how can we remove the things that are repetitive or, or things that you don't necessarily like from your day to day? And how can we give you something that is more meaningful, more engaging, more interesting to do? And, and because that's where we want the, the humans to be. Um, that's, that's what they should do. Um, it's, it's, it's the, I, I think it's, it's, we had this, this industrial revolution, then we have this services revolution. Now we are in, in a, in a, kind of a fourth generation revolution where uh, augmented AI um, is, is helping people to, to work smarter and better and more productive. And Laurent, as we wrap things up, we talked about the future of AI. Let's talk about the future of Coveo. In 2021, you guys closed on a $250 million IPO in the Toronto Stock Exchange. Congratulations on that. What does that mean for the, uh, the future of Coveo? I don't think he's allowed to talk about it since you are listed, no? or I don't know what are the rules. Yeah, no, I can't talk specifically about um, about the stock or the news or so on. So, so what I will say though is um, the future for Corveo is bright because the problems that we're going after are getting bigger and bigger, and um, and. The more, 
so so the more the more we we look at this and um, <laughs> the bigger the problem the, the problem it is the massive amount of data of users going self-service of the massive amount of competition over the likes of Amazon and others uh, out there require traditional companies to accelerate their digital transformation and to accelerate the adoption of AI to compete, to serve their customers better, to uh, leverage the talent of their employees in new ways, and we're there to help. We're there to help by helping them sell more, helping them serve their customers better from a customer service standpoint, and helping them uh, leverage the talent and, uh, and the potential of their employees. Yeah, I, I didn't want to get him in trouble, Jerry, them. but I figured it was nice to bring it up because I, I mean, that is kind of a cool thing going on there. Well, for them, I guess the more data it, it is, the more complex the topic it is, the better it is for you guys. Yeah. It gets like you, you are into solving complicated, complex problems um, and that works perfectly for you. Like, so the more situation gets complicated, the better it is for Coveo. Exactly. So everyone else wants it easy. Covail, they want it a little harder, it sounds like. Well, let's put it this way. We want to solve big problems. And big problems, by definition, it's not easy to solve. So that's what we're doing. That's where we're going. That's what we are doing. That's what we are aiming at. Excellent. Well said. Laurent, thank you very much for joining us today. We really appreciate all the information. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. That was Laurent Simoneau, the president and CTO at Coveo. Find out more about the work they're doing at get.coveo.com. This has been The Great Digital Transformation with Gerard Zatvani. To participate in the conversation, go to gerardzatvani.com. The Great Digital Transformation is a production of Forbes Books.